And we are live here with Looney tonight on Splatoon Tourney, featuring a Division 5 matchup between Los Inklings and Chocolate Therapy. My name is Spice, and I'm joined on the mic by Genie. Genie, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing. I'm feeling great. Ready. Always love. Always love some great Looney action. And I know that these two teams are going to bring us amazing action for this Friday evening week three matches oh for sure yeah to start off with our double header los inklings and chocolate therapy we got low coming off already 1-0 on the season of this but being around since like i want to say like splatoon one like late 2015 players been around in the scene whether i be in the land scene been all online as well one of the foundations really of this competitive environment so really love to see those inklings getting some action here today oh yes i actually had the pleasure to play against them at, at, at atlanta got to meet them so they're they're a very 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 veteran team here um chocolate therapy i haven't got as much information on them because they're just like we're comparing one of the oldest still surviving teams in, in los inklings to chocolate therapy but i know coming off of a good one one in one score line they they have they have some room to improve off of the loss but they also had some amazing uh, upsides in their in their victory that they had oh for sure yeah chocolate therapy i want to say one of the more up-and-coming team as a couple of years year or so i remember i think i cast it for them at like rip and here tonight yeah you mentioned one one on the season decent start to be here going into week three but like definitely still stuff to go we're at this point where it's like you can start playoff implications going down the line knowing the teams you got to beat with like a few weeks left in the season as we're going to be going into the first game clan blitz scorch gorge to kick us off here yes this is a great map of not not many people complain about it at all do i love to see some heavy spot or some heavy gameplay and some reflex gameplay if you know me you know the reflex Oh, yeah, so great comps. I love seeing the heavy edits on both teams. Also seeing Hammy with Rob repping that reflux as well. So I'm excited to see what we got. The clan was immediately just trying to look for uh, who's establishing that clan economy, who's going to be able to secure mid with paint control. Already seeing that Los Inklings are starting to get a cup, at least one, maybe find another pick, get on the board there and starting to build up those clans here in those first 30 seconds. Yeah, they, they do get some clams, but they do run into the range plus the edit combo. Those two weapons are really hard to just like, ram your face into because of the chip damage. Chip damage from, from the range buster plus just the constant pressure from that edit. Uh, it, it was a little bit too strong of a wall uh, for those things to, to break. Yeah, strong wall indeed. They used the Kraken as a bit of a wall breaker now from the side of Chocolate Therapy. You see that Los Inklings already has that power clamp on board online. Trying to see if they're going to be able to make a move with it here. Crab Tank online as well for them, rotating around. Trying to see if they can find this opening in this first minute or so. Splash will now on the right side. You see them approaching from the top. Teresa now trying to do what she can here with the, with the Crab Tank on that bridge. Just trying to get anything here at this point. See Mole down on the side of Chocolate Therapy. Maybe this is a chance for them to the girls to start breaking their way through. Although, well, luckily, they're able to survive through that through the bomb onslaught. They've got to get some more clams here. They have some good way to go in, and we do see that Carbon is way deep in there. We're making so much space. They live for so darn long. Ooh. The team was able to get quite a few clams in. 53. I think that that's that's fairly solid. There are a couple clam spawns that are reasonably close to the basket, so that could have probably gotten down to, to maybe in the 40s. But overall, I think 53 is a great opening. Oh yeah, you would love to see that kind of opening from Los Inklings. You already see the missiles coming out through too. And now the two down on the side of Chocolate Therapy as well here. Chocolate Therapy now has a couple specials online. Trying to get them all in, trying to see if they're gonna be able to make their way in now with three minutes to go if they can force a comeback. Yeah, Los yeah, Inklings are still controlling mid at this point. So look at them just go here at this point now. Yeah, they're just just holding this top mid mid control is, is going to be really good. They've got to watch out. They don't want to drag these, these killer whales into each other, and they do lose uh, their their heavy. Ooh. That's going to be going down from the side. And oh my goodness, the gal comes in and gets pretty much everybody. That's three down. The tower clan will jump back, and they will chuck up therapy. Will have broken the basket. Missiles for re retake. These are good. This will cause a lot of chaos, but you can't lose the lead, which they just did. 
Yeah, chocolate therapy clinching to that lead now. I see them having to fight through those missiles. They're two down in the process, trying to see if they can keep that basket open just a bit longer, but it looks like they have to reset back into mid now. Most inklings now at the point where they're two minutes to go. There's definitely still a lot of time for a comeback here, especially because it's not in a massive lead on to have, they have to cut through, trying to just do what they can. A few clamps on each side here, and now you're gonna see a couple of members go down on each group now, and at the three down situation for those Inklings, Chocolate Therapy starting to hold strong with less than two minutes to go. Yeah, that's gonna be a big, um, big opening here. Chocolate Therapy should be able to get extend this lead quite a bit. The Zooka is out, two shots have been used, not been able to find anything, nor with that third, but oh, great direct from the range rusher, Jacob there. That was really good. But now, oh my goodness, can Ooh. Chocolate Therapy get some more climbs in? They're losing pretty much all their members, so if I'm that, that shot, I would I would back off. Yeah, I think backing off is another just strong option at this point for Chocolate Therapy. He did see them add on to their lead, which is very massive for them, though, here. Especially as Los Inklings have to establish that clam economy and also figure out a way to get in. You do see the wall combine here as they, Los Inklings has now broken the barrier. Trying to just find some extra clears, get some extra members up here as well. But two down in the process. Oh my! Able to keep things going. Get that power clip in. They are taking lead as well. That was one minute to go. And the carbon's in there as well. Can they get the spots here? They should have been able. Yep. Oh, uh, spectator cam with the some beautiful uh, aftercurricular activity. Yeah, those extracurriculars just at the perfect opportunity now too. It looks like 45 seconds to go. You're looking at chocolate therapy now having to come back quickly. They have that pity clam back there at their basket gun and now a power clam just seeing if they're gonna be able to make some moves here. A few specials online from their side while playing popped off. The Zuka is still online for them too. Core coming up, but you do see them just getting shut down right by their ramp here. And now you're seeing Wolf's Igloo start to swarm in at these last 25 seconds. Just amazing oh, defense wow. and makes a massive picks in the process. Yeah, Killer Whale gets cross map kill. Lead. That's helping out their teammates so well. This is going to be a, such a far push to get through. They do have Kraken, but that doesn't do what it used to do. It's not an easy way through. Zuka, on the other hand, that could break through. That could be what they need. And if you can find this carbon, that would be massive. You cannot go down to this carbon, though. Ooh. Luckily, they get that carbon for relatively free. They get the reflex down as well. They're going to start moving in. The Kraken, can I get another one? Yes. You get the, can you get to the basket, though? The Power Clan has fallen. It stays on the map. That's important. They can get the lead with a couple more clans, and they do chocolate therapy. Yeah, Chocolate Therapy just playing that end game almost flawlessly there. You just saw them utilizing a lot of their specials in a very appropriate and very optimal way. Just being able to work their way in against Los Inklings defense. Very back and forth game here in game one. I'm really excited to see what this rest of the set has for us. Oh, for sure. Both these teams training blow for blow. And just in the end, it was just Chocolate Therapy with... Honestly, I, I felt like it was just heroic plays that Los Inklings were going for. And Chocolate Therapy, they, they bent, but they didn't break. And they they went, they they stood tall. And in doing so, were able to have enough members alive to get those clams in. Because in Clam Blitz, if you... It, it, it's unlike Rainmaker or Tower Control. If you lose everybody on your team but one person, the objective still goes just as fast. If you The more players you lose, the slower the objective goes in Clam Blitz. Because that's less people throwing in clams. And that's having three members alive in overtime when you're going for that final push. That was pivotal. That is why they won this game. For sure, yeah. I really think that them just maintaining numbers at the important time was pivotal from the side of Chocolate Therapy, knowing that even though they were down going into overtime, they had really the full set play at that point, knowing exactly what they had to do, maintaining members, getting those like long range picks. You saw that killer whale getting a massive one from cross map and that's all really important. So now going into tower control, certain shipyard, are you expecting like any major changes, whether that be comps or play style from either team here? Um, I would definitely hope to see the range blaster come back. That is a weapon that I know dominates on this map. I've always been saying if range gets a second kit, that is like, fun and usable um that flows better with the kit it's it, it'll dominate on this map and kraken has showed us that it's that it can it can do well here the problem is there is some there is a little bit of grading in some areas that you just can't really get to but overall i feel like that range blaster will do a lot a lot of work especially if both these um especially if both teams keep a spotlight because range blaster um it has a love-hate relationship with edit um, it's one of those spotlings where it can run up and direct you before it can shred you.
Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think custom range especially is going to really see some great value if we do bring it out here. And especially with both teams bringing out a spot link in that first game, rocking that heavy edit. It's, I think there's definitely a lot of interesting counterplay that could be done from both sides here. We're going to get a chance to look at these opening comps once again. We are seeing the Hydra spot link coming out now from the side of Los Inklings. And you're seeing a very similar comp from the side of Chocolate Therapy. Yeah, I, Chocolate Therapy's comp, you have the Zooka Shooter, you have the 52 Gal Carry, AoE, and a Cooler Backline. That's, I, their comp, I feel like we might not see all that many changes from it um, throughout the day. But, lo same thing, seeing that Hydra come out, and that's the non-screen Hydra, so I, I, I'm not, I'm not a thousand percent on the screen rolls. But, Booyah Bomb is always strong on target. Oh yeah, just having that GG option at the end if need be. Maybe that's what most things are going for here. Knowing that one defensive special is going to be everything for them. You are seeing that Chocolate Therapy is now starting to just control mid. The Zooka shot over now. Two down from the side of Los Inklings. And so already taking it essentially to that first checkpoint and just seeing multiple members going down in the process. Just through them is amazing slaying power as Chocolate Therapy is looking to just keep this going. Yeah, they're they're gonna have the Zuka online. Even if they go down, they have that cooler. They're gonna be a Kraken as well here. They can't lose too many members. And as I say that, they've lost everybody. They've lost pretty much everybody. The range is gonna Ooh. somehow Ooh. try and back off, but they won't be able to get out. I don't think there's any jumps that came in, but I did see the jump mark. No, actually, there was somebody that jumped in. They're behind them. The two that jumped in. Two, two came in. Yeah, one now being able to run away. Insane call out there, just being able to very risky play as well from the side of Chocolate oh, no. Therapy, just getting in and the multiple members going down once again. And Chocolate Therapy once again has the tower, never mind, as it's a three down situation. And they can with that reflux just to help keep as the tower. As Teresa also moving up now with that Hydra spot, like gonna see what's gonna be coming out here, especially because those inklings that that reflux about to have Tetris online. Make that never mind, as it's a two down situation for them. Yeah, Ooh. that. If they had those missiles online, that could have been really, really, really good. But they gotta watch out this Kraken. It does see one and it does see a jump. Will it run out in time? They do go, they do run out, but they aren't able to get that the trade on, a, after that. So, can they find this member in, in the low ground? No, they won't go down. But again, there's a low ground fight. Lock is going trades back and forth. Who's really gonna come out on top? I think it's Chocolate Therapy at the end here. Yeah, Chocolate Therapy seems to have taken control now. And you saw that some of their specials just coming out there out from the side of Los Anklings. The 52 going down, being able to respawn back in as well. And now just a bit, once again, Chocolate Therapy just having this control at this point. Halfway through the game has passed. Well, the tower is going back. Oh and my. Being taken out with that killer whale. Getting so much value here for oh. Chocolate Therapy as they still have control and they're going to keep on going. Wow. I, I thought they are off the map there. They looked like they walked, they walked off, but they had a, a mid-air jump to stay alive. They have been cooking on this gal for so long they need to find be able to find those reflex in the low ground they won't be able to but there's a jump in um there are, the jump ins were were there i, I kind of i, I kind of see the play but not not for me. Yeah, I'm not too sure either what was supposed to be the play there, but you see the Los Inklings are to find some other stuff now. Two down up briefly on the side of Chocolate Therapy as Los Inklings trying to finally get past that first checkpoint, making it all the way over here. Now Reflux about to have some types of missiles online for potentially, but Hammy's now forced into the corner. It looks like having to jump back too, so going, but it's going to be a matter now if at this point, with it going back to neutral, and these 90 seconds are pivotal here for Los Inklings. Yeah, these, these 90 seconds... They really need to find find a good way in. If this gal can get some good clean shots down, that'll be good. They do see a jump. Can they get that spot? No, the splash wall up on the other side at the perfect time. They have their own killer whale up, but I don't really know who's going to combo with that. And then I say that, there's two that go down through the help of the Zuka. Zuka, can it find another one? Yes, that's three. Beautiful. Two specials, two entries, and they're in here. Oh, and this looks like they might be having enough momentum to potentially take lead here. Booyah Bomb coming out. It's tight. The clock is ticking now, and those Inklings have taken the lead at this last... Like a checkpoint, looking to keep this going, potentially. And they Shaving get it, they get it. More members. Oh, they are getting past check. Big. Pivotal here for those Inklings. That's insane. Now the Hydra is backing off. They don't have a... They do have a full checkpoint advantage, but they don't quite have the Booyah Bomb at the ready. Missiles can do very similar work on tower, but not as strong as that Booyah Bomb. This Hydra cannot go down as they have lost their entirety of the front line. 
and no, they lose the Hydra to a Zooka shot. What a shot there, getting a alert of that Hydra now. Chocolate Therapy's looking in the position area. They, they have missiles. Keep holding on. They have missiles online, though. This could be scary here now. Missiles now all in. Locked on from the side on the tower there at checkpoint two. But Los Inkles taking control Booyah. of the tower. Never mind. Chocolate Therapy, can they hold on here? Five seconds to go. Booyah, Bob. GG potentially here. Maybe a bit early, but now oh. it's Los Inkles clutching that out. Oh, my goodness. That was... The Booyah Bomb forces the Kraken off, and then the members just couldn't get back in time. As I did also see the Curling Bomb from the Reflux take out somebody behind the tower in all that chaos. A nice bank shot off the wall, bounced below tower, perfectly exploded in someone's face. And oh, the, the stall from Hammy's missiles into, into that Booyah Bomb from the Hydra, that was beautiful. But we got to say, this, this opening here from the Zooka plus a double in the Killer Whale, Slug went massive with the triple. And really, from all that momentum on that point was just in favor of both singles. That Trizuka, as you mentioned, just getting those clutch picks, whether it be the actual numbers game or just the the mental high you get from getting all of those picks, it just led to Los Inkling starting to roll here. Then and getting this second checkpoint too, very clutch of them to do at that point because even just a big advantage there they're able to just rock with that momentum make it even harder for chocolate therapy to break on through uh, once again another back show that we're having so far and this is only and that's only game two yeah i i love this and the, the the problem that i i see though is that for Lowe's inklings their push was a little bit slower and a little bit more methodical and chocolate therapy's pushes have always just been fast explosions um the only exception was that that quick double from the shot on those things but re like most of their their games have been slow burns waiting for the reflux to get um um to get missiles go in with that which is is good but with how long the missiles have been nerfed uh it's you can't build them up like you can't build up two missiles in 14 seconds like you used to on that weapon so it's i'm worried about a mode like rainmaker which is all about explosions the upside though is is that with those missiles, you could can have those explosive tendencies and those explosive moments, but it is a much harder weapon to use on Rainmaker. Oh yeah, I would agree on Maker definitely. Like it does get harder to use getting able to get that map, especially with the way of both these teams. You see Los Angeles with the um approach of like not as explosive but it's getting the job done even remember Sloan steady can win the race at this point and chocolate therapy just winning some mechanics outright just speed being exactly it's been it's been a great interesting matchup in terms of just that play style here and it's coming into rainmaker where really any play style can be working despite the detendering favor speed i think we could be in for some absolute fireworks especially looking at the comps which it's what we've been seeing that so far yes and all i don't think i've ever seen an, a comeback hydra i love the com all the comeback on the side of los inklings that means that they want to play this extremely extremely fast the problem is they don't have a cooler so i don't know how successful that will be but you know what i'm never gonna doubt their strategy because they they the only time i played them they absolutely dominated Oh, that makes sense then. Yeah, uh, Comeback Hydra is something you don't typically see, but it's now the speed on Los Inklings is starting to work out in favor for them with despite the lack of core. Zuka up from the side of Chocolate Therapy, though. Not just... They're looking to just get some stuff going at this point. Because they're going to be able to break that first check and it's trying to fight off over on that left side. Multiple members on each side starting to go down. Rainmaker just trying to hold on tight with all those specials coming right at them. They get picked off right before the pedestal. Yeah, Kraken coming in clutch, able to sh shut that one down uh, before that pedestal. And you, you need to be able to hold on to that. Oh, can they get the cooler? They do get the cooler and are able to live through the Zuka. If they can help the teammates get some, some good kills, that will be good. They're able to get one, but they have to watch out because the Hydra's on top of their teammate. Those are going to be trades back and forth, and it will always go in favor of the team who had the cooler. And that's the side of Chocolate Therapy. They had that cooler. They're going to be back in the fight, but they are going to be slowed down by this Booyah Bomb. Oh, yeah, and that Booyah Bomb is going to get some... 
positioning at least for stalling out chocolate there from getting in one of the members of ct going down in the process too kraken now trying to get rid of that carbon it does so indeed two members now down three members now from the side of los inklix as chocolate therapy it gets a wipe here but not being able to get the rainmaker though you see them painting up for a potential push up ahead and now they finally have the rainmaker trying to see if they're going to be able to get up to that left side get that top check and be able to start taking lead here you see them painting over gotta see if they're gonna be able to get over on this ramp a lot of members a lot of fire being flown over towards this side and they're kind of cornered at this point oh my. but they find that opening and get the pedestal wow that was a beautiful take onto the pedestal they're going to be able to push this a little bit further are they going to opt to go in the low ground side they will but with that new oh. change they're going to go oh. so far so fast all the way down to six they're able to hit touch the pedestal they have kraken at the ready they're going to be able to get the pop oh. and that's going to be a one that's wow. game that is game chocolate therapy explosive offense from them and it's been the general theme of them this entire set and it really started to make the click on rainmaker undertow what from that first checkpoint after that bit of stalling that los angeles is able to provide just that great defense there chocolate therapy able to weave their way around get that first check and then yeah thank you to the rework that happened a couple seasons ago to able to make one of the most explosive runs to the pedestal at the goal end that we've seen in a long time was it this season or was it last season? It might have been the season before this one. I could be wrong. No though. way it's been that long. Have I been gone that long? <laughs> have I really been gone that long? Oh my goodness. I, I guess I, I guess I do only play Tower Control when I play solo. <laughs> I, I just hop on to play Range Blaster, that's all I do. No, that is completely valid, honestly. Yep. going into game four now we saw Come some on. great offense from both teams now but chalk therapy is quickly up los angeles could easily bring this back honestly just going into this next game no i i honestly feel like this is gonna be four four if los angeles plays their cards right because of how their comp has been utilized with the hydra hydra on this map is if it doesn't have if there's not a charger on the other side and you don't have like double zuka then you're fine this map like hydra when you give it when you give a good hydra player this map and then you can get them to sit top mid versus some a team that has not played or it doesn't have as much hydra experience like playing against as much hydra experience hydra can just absolutely floor you on this map it is really 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 funny to watch so but the problem is is that hydra doesn't let you re-enter the zone so you pretty much 3v4 and re retake um in the mid fight but as soon as you lo you're locked up and you're you're ready top mid top left any pretty much anywhere the new grading i do know this map i do know the new grading where you can squid roll up and squid roll up and back uh in the in the pit and you can go on the grading which is in spawn that area is disgusting oh yeah that new area is, is absolutely disgusting indeed now for Anumami Ruins. I really like what a lot of stuff they did yes. in the rework here. It's going to be interesting to see how these teams now, after a few weeks now into this rework, should be able to adjust as needed, being able to play off of that, really. And I love what you've been mentioning, especially about, like, Hydra, especially being kind of like a matchup check in terms of, like, how you approach it here. It can definitely get a lot of advantage here, but yeah, it struggles get in. You're not getting that much in at the here to see what we're bringing out on both Bro. sides returned to the heavy edits it looks like is what we're seeing but you know what the crab tank the crab tank yes. is just a pocket it is just a pocket um pocket hydra and i'm uh, from being able to use a lot of crab tank on this map it is really strong here no matter what they've done to crab however many times they can they throw it in, throw it into the gr in the ground after it being broken beyond belief it is it is still good on this map. Oh, oh, yeah, that's what? The fighter. Whoa, okay. Our immediate early picks happening on. There's a lot of fighting happening, and multiple members on each side going down. Most Inkling take control of the zone, but losing members in the process of chocolate therapy is now should be able to cap here. Three down on the side of Los Inklings, and that's going to lead to a quick lead change from chocolate therapy. You're going to see how them push up, trying to just get some numbers advantage and get some specials. And now this block is going to be potentially interesting here. Yeah. They are they are able to have um two specials online here. The Zuka is out. What can they find with that? Um they've got also have the killer whale. The Zuka not able to find anything, but it has caught boss bought some time. But the problem is the missiles are in. What will those find? Oh my goodness, that was a bomb kill and a direct. 
Oh, it's just gonna keep on going, getting with these shots. And that's an insane value you're gonna be getting from the side of Chocolate Therapy, who's now quickly rolling away with this lead, having that Kraken on the line as well. Gonna see how much value they're gonna be able to get out of this, because it's looking really, really difficult for Los Inkles just to get back into the zone at this point, firing Azuka, trying to get some extra shots, but paint is gonna be need to be thrown on the ground no. soon. He gets no. one zone. Gotta see if they're gonna be able to keep up here. Uh, they do get the zone, they do get control. We gotta watch out, there are gonna be people around this cooler. Can they find the edit? The edit's just so fast. You pop you pop a cooler down, you get that curling bomb, the, get the curling bomb and the curling bomb reset from your ink tank, you are, are out of there. It's one of the most slippery weapons to track down in the entire game. Oh yeah, I've noticed that a lot playing against heavy edits, and that most inklings starting to maintain some advantage here too. Zuka be fired at them though, and one of their oh two, three of their members going down in the process. Oh, Looks like it's gonna be a quick zone flip here for Chocolate Therapy. If they're gonna be able to keep up, yep, they do, and now they're just gonna see how much they're gonna be able to make up with this positioning here. Unfortunately, didn't want, know if they wanted to go in front of their wall or or just fall back to go get the cooler, yeah. and they chose the wrong time to go behind their wall because they got oh, close cool. enough and died to the bomb. This is going to be good for, for those Inklings, though. They're going to be able to get in here. And the key is they still have a ton of their specials at the ready. They, it only really costs them this one. Here goes two specials out. They need to find value with this more than just stall. The Kraken is in. That will force the Crab to break. But as long as they can get the kill here for free and cleanly, that will be good. Unfortunately, they lose two in the process there. Yeah, Chocolate Therapy just finding these picks over and over again. Now being able to take control of the zone. Once again, as you see them just trying to move on up, getting past this wall, and now just seeing what Max is going to be able to do here. The zone being put back into neutral for a bit, but it looks like Chocolate Therapy still maintaining advantage, just going to be able to keep this pressure up and try to work their way out of this penalty with less than two minutes to go. Yeah, this will be this will be massive for Chocolate Therapy if they can come through this one, because they'll really force those Inklings in with their back up against the wall. They have to be able to survive through the onslaught here. They lose two members. Can they hold on? It's two for two. They get another kill. They get another kill. Oh my goodness. And that's a wipe out spicy. That was beautiful. Yeah, love to see that kind of wipe out there from Chocolate Therapy. Who's going to be able to work their way out of this penalty here. And you're seeing a little English trying to flank up from that pit. But you see both of them going down. And once nope, again, another three down. And that should be game. That a little bit too too little too late at the end. And they also just one member left who had a Zuka. Oh, wow. That was honestly from Chocolate Therapy. Just seeing their gal absolutely shred those inklings. That was beautiful. The RNG, the perfect positioning behind their wall and their teammates keeping their feet painted and also helping them get some splats there. That was, that was the match right here, right here. You just love to see this amazing boom, boom. gal play. Getting that pick, boom, boom. getting a second, being able to just keep finding those picks, keeping the paint up as well as you've been mentioning, and that's getting all that value. Dewey being a, basically a five tool weapon at that point, just doing every single role that that team needs, being able, and then just to get that objective, it was basically all just GG's in game four from there. They also just having their teammates get that assist, help them get that assist. It was it was beautiful. Victory Dugal is a very selfish weapon when it comes to like when we when we think about weapons in Splatoon, mm -hmm. um, it's of all the like the short range shooters, um, the the mid the average range shooters, it is definitely the help me carry we weapons. And when you have one that can pop off like that, that you put that you put in positions and they go big and they go clutch, that is why you have have run that gal. It is, it's it can destroy a team. Not quite single-handedly, but when you give it the space and the time of day, it's it's magic. Oh, for sure. Yeah, 52 gets so much value, especially in the right comp, in the right setting. When it gets going, it gets going. And that's been really clutch from the side of Chocolate Therapy, really swinging the game in their favor. They've had multiple situations those like three downs. And then getting it, translating those into that wipe near the end was just the icing on the cake for them the dagger as they were just able to just keep getting that momentum here now we're going back into clamp blitz and going into museum this time for game five it was pretty back and forth early on in game one so this one should be exciting as well yes Ooh. and oh we're gonna have a big swap up there machine and a roller um the v roller coming out i like i do have to say i, I like the machine for for some more some better aoe and 
uh, over the reflex, but seeing the roller come out with it, it we're gonna have a lot of pressure on on this this heavy edit to put a lot of paint down. Oh, for sure, yeah. And clam blades, where this paint is very important, just being able to find those clams and really establish movement. It's going to be very heavy focus on that heavy edit for them, just to be able to now in that crab trying to just get that paint on the ground. You see their machine went down in that mid fight process, but in those first 30 seconds, oh no one going down, but that Zuka finding value once again. Two down from the side of Chocolate Therapy, but look at that trade like into a white on the Los Inklings and Chocolate Therapy now being able to get those clams trying to work their way up here see if they're gonna be able to make a push soon they're gonna try and go but oh my goodness the spots are oh, perfect oh. placement there are gonna be two that go down though on the side of those things make that three just gonna be the, down the, the spotling left oh, oh, wow. here are the clams everybody's still up pretty much here, other than the shot who put the clam in these this lead will go go really really far down gotta watch out though it's just cracking it could really do some damage or it could get punished pretty easily yeah, oh my! Now, Uchik pops out at there, and now the basket is gonna close with their at 59, and there's just so much done from the side of Chocolate Therapy, whether it's reflected in that scoreboard or not. As Los Inklings now having to retake mid, having that whale online, trying to fire it up for another long range pick here, see if they're gonna be able to get anything going. One member on each side going down, two down after the side of Chocolate Therapy, and oh thanks to wipe as Los Inklings have responded very quickly on their own. Gotta see if they're gonna be able to score soon too. Good coordination, coordination, uh, those clams coordinations, no! They were all just throwing them forward and nobody was able to make a clam. Unfortunately for them, Chocolate Therapy came back so fast with their cooler that they were all back and ready to fight before the coordination from Los Inklings was ready to go and that wipeout and they, that they worked so, so hard for. They have nothing to show for it. Unfortunate, yeah, and now Los Inklings once again in a three down situation, just there for all alive. Same fight of their life, and that's basically an effect. Respawn in. This should be another point opportunity for Los Inklings that they have the clams on there for Chocolate Therapy. Ooh. Let's see if they're going to be able to keep their way of going. Battle amazing. Inklings, though, being able to just shut every approach down at their basket as it looks like that power clam is going to go down and no. both these teams on the offense have just struggled as of late. Yeah, unfortunately for Los, Los Inklings, they had a clam underneath their feet that they could have easily grabbed. They have a crab tank at the run field, the chocolate therapy. They are just such a good team. They are just going back and forth, back and forth, and they're taking everybody out on Los Inklings. They're giving some space in mid, but as soon as they give up the space, they reclaim it just as fast and just as forcefully. Yes, and now you're just looking at the snap from Chocolate Therapy, who once again has the clam. Mag's now going to be able to move in with a lot, lot of just paint around them. Just kind of see they're going to be able to just hold on here. They have less than two minutes to go. They already have the lead. And it doesn't look like Los Inklings has a ton of clams available at this point either. Really only having in the single day. So but Chocolate Therapy has two power clams available. Potentially a third coming up soon from their Range Blaster. And you see them having that core online there in a bit. Actually, with the Kraken online getting shut down before they get activated, though. But oh, close bad, Inklings, too? now on a huge... How much longer are they going to be able to keep this going? But, and they still need to get a score. They got they got two spots, oh. but they lose two people just as fast as they got those spots. The Kraken is going to be in. Luckily, it got forced back by the spotling. But they are going to be climbing up this wall here. Can they find the jump? Can they find that landing? No, they, nor will they be able to find oh. that power clam. Yeah, the power clip is going down at that last minute was just Thanks. one minute to go. If they're able to get two power clams in, it's they, they could swing this entire loop. Yeah defense at least, but like the clams, that's the, been the big thing for them. Just trying to see if they get one open trades now, but it's gonna be last 45 seconds. They still gotta get that first score here. Also got a, but they got the perfect kill on the right. Killer Rail is going to mark the last player alive, and that's going to do a lot of damage. They are able to find the splat there. They can go open this up here, Spice. Chocolate Therapy, what have you got? You've played all so, so well this entire game. Can you hold on? And now we're approaching. Huge moment now for Los Inklings, and they're going to be able to keep this Ooh. going. But that's a wipe, and they got that clamps in, but only one, and that's a huge missed opportunity for. They don't have a pity. But at the right time, without a pity as well, as you mentioned. And they don't they're get one, they have one now. But five seconds, this could be a very interesting overtime situation, but then Zuka trying to find those extra picks here. Andrew oh, just roll, Mr. Jump! Situation. Oh, here we go. 
The roller did miss the jump. Who's gonna be able to come climb this wall? They have to go up the wall. They have to get on this oh. wall. They have to get up there. You have to get up there. Or the jump's coming in. Where's the clam? Where's the clam? <laughs> oh, oh, the 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 oh my god, they only have have enough at this point. They take the way low sickly just because Spicy. They 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 broke the barrier, they had a wipeout, and then they they just all panicked to try and get those clams in at the end. I would have loved to have been in their voice chat there. And that was that was a pitiful game. They oh, I'm gonna be honest, I have written them off in this game. I didn't think I didn't think losing things had a shot. I, I thought chocolate therapy played too strong, too good all game for them for their their defense to break at that moment in time. But luckily, um luckily for Los Inklings, they were able to dig deep in overtime. Oh my goodness. That was beautiful. Now, you love if that's where the experience from this team really we wrote them off earlier in that game, but it's going, but they were able to just like, and it's been like insane for them. And now Los Angeles now, well, game six, so it's very much harder for them here. So it's like chocolate therapy. It, they could have been up in a responding at that point, going into then game six. Oh, a tower haggle This is gonna be fun. Yeah, Tower Virtual Hagglefish is, oh, I, I love this map. It's such a elegantly designed map um, at, at times. I, I love the second checkpoint area. That's just, that's just me. First checkpoint is kind of boring, um, but second checkpoint, it's chaotic. A, AOE weapons can do a lot of damage here. Um, long range weapons can do a lot of damage here, but there's also tight corridors where you can get sneaky spots for eat for short range weapons where I've seen carbons, splooshes, and if anybody in there is wild enough or um let's just say mentally uh gifted to play Luna. Um yes, that's me. I'm mentally gifted enough to play Luna. Um it, it's it, it has some a spot here. Actually, now that I think about it, I would actually be really excited this no, no, we're not oh, seeing it because like right, CRB does everything Luna wish it exactly, could do, yeah. but better. And if you're all, do you want to play Luna? You just play, you just play uh, S Blaster because you also have Luna with a long range mode and better sub and a better special. Love the one. Yeah, last time Luna was good was Splatoon One. Let's be honest. Yeah, honestly, now that I think about it. But now it's just a casual Splatoon 1, just playing Luna? Yeah. It was great. It was top tier. Exactly. We are actually I, do, I do like the reflex pick here. Reflex on this map has always been, in my opinion, really good. A lot of flat areas to paint really fast to get those missiles up. And there's a lot of areas that you can use curling bombs, just throw it down the lanes, down the sides. And it causes chaos. Is the reflex over there? Is the reflex not there? And um, a lot of good, a lot of good poke can happen. Oh yeah, I actually really like the reflux pick too from the side of both most inkly. Just seeing them get so much value out of this pick in general for them has been really great to see from this weapon getting some shiny and now the hydra going down oh in the process. Just these long range picks continuously two down from the side of Los Inklings once again as Chocolate Therapy now able to get that first push going. So see how far they're gonna be able to keep that up because it looks like they have that Kraken online too, and just more members of Los Inklings keep going down. Yeah, they do. Los Inklings again, this is this is kind of how they started out in most of the game, getting pushed around by Chocolate Therapy, but then able to find their footing. Some games sooner than others, and some games no footing at all. But they need to be able to find this footing pretty quickly, because second checkpoint on this map is pivotal. If you get through that, it's it's not good game. Getting through third checkpoint is good game, um, but getting through second checkpoint this early would be detrimental. Definitely, yeah. Chocolate Therapy trying to do so indeed, but those Inklings able to stop it there. Trying to just get that tower back into a neutral state, get a push of their own here. You saw the breakthrough there. You saw those Inklings now have to break through that first checkpoint just to start getting through now. But now, with a bubble online, get up in. This could be the start for Los Inklings here, but multiple members starting to go down on the side. Chocolate Therapy going two down in the process. Los Inklings start to begin their push. Yeah, this is going to be a, a, an opportunity for them. They're going to have the Hydra locked up here on this tower. They're going to have a Booyah Bomb ready to go. If they have a lot of um, a lot of pressure thrown at them, like that Zooka, 
This should do a lot of good damage over to the Zuka user. No, it doesn't go down. They don't go down. And unfortunately for Los Inkling, I thought they had this checkpoint for free with everything that they invested and all the space that they had. But they go down just before they can cap it. That chocolate therapy responded well on defense when it looked like Los Inkling was just going to be able to break through. And that chocolate therapy already pushing into Los Inkling's territory here. Seeing that the heavy just edit just going to be from this this. Oh, that's gonna get run over. Here, see, I might get ran over here, but just keep this going as the tower is still in Los Inklings territories and now starts to revert back to. Yeah, all these, all these spots are coming through. Finally, finally, Los Inklings. They should probably, hopefully, maybe get through this first checkpoint. We'll see. Because chocolate therapy, they have been so darn good. But as we saw last game, it only takes one. It only takes one to push the other way. And that's going to be an early spot onto this roller. That early spot on the roller, but two down from the side of Chuck Therapy. This lead is uh -oh. starting to quickly evaporate here. Uh oh. This is for Chuck. Checkpoint, like you've been mentioning, approaching the third one very quickly here. Two down for the side of Chocolate Therapy once again. It only takes one indeed. Look at this down, the Booyah Bob push. And they're going to be able to get past that for third checkpoint. Oh my and goodness. Three down. This could be it here. As those Inklings might be able to just take the set. Or take Can the I get it? Oh my gosh. It literally only takes one, bro. They were getting plastered all game. The comeback mentality. Oh my god. I again once again I thought chocolate therapy after that like first push. I thought it they basically started to have as you've been saying over and over, it only takes one. Los Inklings, once again, just finding that late game push, or basically just pushing it into the late game, the end game themselves. No matter what five second time when that first check doesn't work, they're just gonna keep on going, able to just break through everything else. Yeah, their their end game is good, is it? I, I haven't watched that movie yet. I, I heard it's good. I heard I heard the purple guy's bad. Is he bad? Yeah, it depends on what you think. It may be just some purple guy fans in chat, so who knows? I know I know Thanos is uh is, is Thanos, but you know. All right, I've I've gotten the rundown, but oh my goodness, the lowest English, they they lo they I I was saying earlier how they got pushed back and they get their footing. They always find their they usually find their footing. There was a couple games that they weren't able to find their footing earlier on. We are tied um, three apiece, but th them being able to show that, yes, they're going to bend but not break is actually insane. And these two late game heroics, one wasn't, was more, le this tower control game was more mid game with how much time was on the clock than the, uh, the climb game, which was overtime. But, oh my goodness. If I'm talking therapy, I'm taking a little bit of a breath here and I'm, Resetting. It's a long. Looty sets are awesome because they are so long. There's, it can go all the way to, to nine games. That there are times to improve. This would all like if this is best of seven. This would be game seven. And best of sevens are like I don't even see them anymore. They just don't don't. I don't feel like they exist in the Splatoon community. We've we've moved on to best of five all the ways, which I prefer because best of threes are uh, bad. Set here. Like these long sets, like as often and, and, and like as we used to, and like especially because Ludi now best of nine, you really get a lot of that adaptation start to come into play. And you've seen that Los Inklings have like made a lot of weapon or in comp changes before. Chocolate Therapy rocking with what some of the with some of their like fundamental stuff, just sticking to their guns pretty much. Oh, if they lost those last two games, maybe they want to change something up. But last time we were on Rainmaker and Under oh now on Ramen, they. We saw the chocolate therapy after they got that first check was able to just kind of steamroll with just some ex with an explosive push. Maybe they're looking to do something like that again, just prevent those in as we start to see what these comps have in store for us once again. Yeah, I, I don't feel like we're going to see chocolate therapy make too much of a swap. This is it. One of those comps that I feel you you pray it, you played it, you practice it, and you know what its strengths are, and you also know what its weaknesses are. And this is what they're kind of used to. When you see Weapons like a range, and you see weapons like a gal. Those are that you usually don't straight um straight off the ball that much. Yeah, and I think it's just oh working for them. But most inklings able to take quickly win that first team fight. Now looking to get to that first. 
third, and it's going to be a bit of a reversal. What we've been seeing as both Inklings now is the team to get that first lead. They, they do get the first lead, but they, it costs like everybody. They're going to try and run this river. That is funny. That is actually funny. That's like no distance at all, Like, but it gets you so many points. Damn, that's a solid jump after that first checkpoint. Since at all. Therapy gonna see, they're gonna replicate. But they go three down the front. He's now thrown into a quarter and gets splatted out in the process. Those Inklings, now three down though. So, but now being able to stop the Rainmaker for them was just pivotal here as that first minute was absolute fireworks. Yeah, that, that first minute was, it was really good for them. We're gonna see if they can hold on here. Cause we haven't really had to see those Inklings um, like after after early game where they, they find their footing. Um, once they go for their push, they don't usually have to like defend with Lee. They're usually trying to um, defend so they don't get knocked out or push. It's not defend Lee. Yeah, I love that like mindset there. Oh that my. side of both things. They're going to be able to like, just push. They don't necessarily like defend Lee. But you see that Chocolate Therapy is finding some massive picks from the other side. They are going to be able to get to that checkpoint and break that puzzle. And they have a numbers advantage too. And you saw what those Inklings they were able Real to just fast. get some massive points here. Quickly here, and that's the lead. Quickly going to Chocolate Therapy. I don't need to try to keep all going, taking it to the 39. 34. I like uh, 39 is good. That's, that's a really solid push. And unfortunately for, for, for both teams, this map is so fast. It, it, it is so darn fast when you get into that that final straightaway and how fast you can rack up points i don't even think six is a strong lap lead on most times and that under like all maps i'd say six is good yeah on most maps that would be good here but now looking at this you're seeing the rainmakers in an interesting position here missiles coming out from the side of los inklings too trying to see if there's gonna be any picks flying rainmakers still in roughly a middle position core cool, alive they are you're going to reset here in a now with two minutes to go we're setting up for a potentially but finally a huge pick offer for chocolate therapy as they're going to be able to try to try to keep things going out in mid and just trying to hold on especially with two minutes left to go yeah that's good um good splats here on the side of chocolate therapy they should be able to like find maybe a little bit of way to extend this leaf I don't know if they want to like how much you want to invest here to really like bash the door open because 34 you can defend but all it takes is one fight missiles are going to be out for handing they are going to have to use them to get the information there's also one on the bottom right it looks like they might be pushing that no they're going to opt to go left side with the team yeah and now the crab tank all side of those English you see multiple picks from both sides reflux starting to get a couple members as well at two down from Oh, here, Los Inklings now at a posi position where they're able to... Oh my! ...pick here as Los Inklings... ...again, going to try and see if they're going to be able to get through... ...therapy has a bit of a lead, but Los Inklings will have no pedestal left to go until the end. They might... Luca. ...on by here, but this could be big. You see them trying to sneak on through from that right... ...and it's going to be clutch here. They, they are able to get the stop, but how many members are they going to lose? They're, both sides are losing members. Chocolate Therapy, they've lost some members. Oh no, Los Inklings, they lose too many people. And will it be? Will they be able to get here to this Rainmaker? The Rainmakers have popped in their favor, but they've lost everybody. And that's going to be the end of the push here, Spicy. Not fortunate end of the push. So for a chance here, they, well, the Los Inklings start, has to start getting a stop if they want anything to happen. But you see them go two down in the process as Chocolate Therapy now gets a three down situation here. And they uh, translate that All into a wipe. And if this isn't game, it's at least going to set up for a very difficult come. To like roughly the 18 or so with 15 seconds to go. Chocolate Therapy has found themselves in a great position. But have gone two down in the process. Three down here. Let's gasp. The final gas that they will have, they have missiles at the ready. They should be able to spike out at where the last member is. They see them on that left side. The three members are coming in through spawn. We've got a killer whale, the big bubbler. They've lost their roller though. What can this Rainmaker do? They have the last special, but we know that they can't use it because they cannot go down. I'm counting for this killer this killer whale and Kraken combo. Can it stop the Rainmaker? Will they be able to find the, the splat here? It will. Yeah. Like 
Though, what the end game you want there from the side of Chocolate Therapy, just having those specials needed, you have the Killer Whale to already serve as this great distraction thing and just putting him in a situation where the Kraken is able to get rid of the Rainmaker from the side of Los Inklings. That was great end play once again. And really, the end games from both these teams have just been exactly what you want to see in order for them to clutch out games they know their win conditions they know exactly what the ha they have to do and this time chocolate therapy was the one to really start playing from behind and they were able they were able to get done i i am i, I do have to take this win for chocolate therapy with a grain of salt is because they look how well they looked in the previous rainmaker game last time we went to rainmaker they looked very good and th this one as well they they looked very good those inklings did push them but again, it's just their speed of their composition is faster and it plays, in my in my opinion, a lot more favorable into a Rainmaker. With the last two games being Splat Zones and Clamblets, I, I'm, mm, this will be, this could go either way, in my opinion. I agree. I do think this goes either way here. I actually think also for Los Inklings, this is probably the modes you want to be seeing here just because of the way they've been able to play, knowing they've been, there's a chance for them. Like no matter what happens, it's, one push, one hold of objective. They're able to start getting some momentum there. Yeah. With the flip and ship shape being a very, can be a very volatile map sometimes on splat zones, especially. Exactly what you want from the side of Los Inklings. Meanwhile, Chocolate Fence Go Link, they are explosive and they've been able to get massive pushes and be consistently here that early game maybe they hold on to it but the last three games have told us that the early game it just ends up being setting up for a great comeback towards the end so it's gonna be hard to call this early no yeah it's it it it's not done until the judd appears on our screen i'm i'm straight up honest with this one especially in zones and, and with car with how cargo can be at times one member alive Get an entire team to super jump back in because it's a lot this is a, one of those longer maps it's it's not like robo ramen where it's it's relatively short to get back in a mid this is a long long map um similar to a map like it feels even longer than ink blood honestly at times it's it can be it can be rough so it'll be up to who can pop off the biggest for team when it comes to the teams but also without losing everybody yeah, I agree completely there. With the immediately from now on the mini map, but you see also Chocolate Therapy getting out to an early zone, a zone capture. But now it's back into mid once again. Zuka being fired, missiles online as well, and being up. Chocolate Therapy in control. I'm not sure, how much longer gonna... has a lot of fighting is just happening at this point. Just seeing. And this first 30 seconds with the core up online from Chocolate Therapy, you're gonna see if they're going to be able to hold and how long will they be able to hold as they go to now three down. Yeah, see, they go three down, but they haven't lost everybody. You see those jumps? They're coming back in. This is exactly what I said. You get the good spots, but you don't get all the spots. And that, that means that the fight is still on. The fight is still here. And Los Inklings, they learn that the hard way. They've lost two. They're going to lose three. They're going Ooh. to lose four. And that's devastating at this point. Chocolate Therapy going to be able to quickly work their way out of this penalty. Having some specials online, too. That whale has been putting up numbers for this team. Also having core, it looks like, as well. And you see them putting in a lot of situation. But that Trizuka starting to find some value, too. And the quick two got, down. The go, go, go. Was, can Los Inkley South catch the zone? They only, again, they got three. They did not get four. They did not get all four. This is pivotal because you see, again, the same situation. They get the spots that they needed, but now they have nothing left. They have to win this fight here. They have to win it now. Trades back and forth. It's just a gal. Oh, there oh, you oh. go. That is the wipeout they needed. Finally get four as you've been looking for this entire time here. And Los Inklings now in this position where they want to force that game now. This this lockout situation will be pivotal at this point. You see them just trying to move their way up, trying to make sure they can keep finding some picks. And now they have the missiles up, trying to through the zone, but we're having Zuka be fired, oh getting one thing on that right side too. And now they're two down from the side of both Inklings, as now the lead isn't gonna change as the zone ends up flipping in favor of Chocolate Therapy. Yeah, but the, the, 
they didn't get all four on the side of chocolate therapy, which means that Los Inklings will be ready to fight a lot, a lot sooner. And with the shot being down, missiles being up, Zuka can do a lot of good damage here. Los Inklings, they're ready to fight and they're ready to go. They get one spot. Can they get another spot? They have that zone and they're looking to run forward with it. Yeah, and now there's a hefty penalty to work through from the side of both teams here. But Los Inklings going to see if they're going to be able to keep this going. They go two down. Both teams go two the down jumps. in the process. It's, there's the jumps, and those are important once again just to get back into a position here. Both Inklings, this could be it for them. Maybe you see them being able to work their way out of their penalty now. Wait, the reflex needs to stay alive. You're the painting weapon. Luckily, oh my gosh, that Eagle's Kraken, I, I have to point that out. It was insane. You push the reflex off the zone, that's an insta cap and some penalty applied. Instant oh. penalty just being messed there. Wow, we it's back and forth at this point, but there's still penalty for penalty on each side. Now, whooping once again as every special is starting to come out now. Missiles being fired out, and those Inklings got to show you if they can be able to force a penalty once again. Two down from those sides. Another time, and those jumps are going to have to start coming in clutch as the roller goes down in the process too, but the zone's still in favor in yellow for now. Cooler is out, and the cooler is ready. Drinks are in. This is going to be chocolate therapies. Maybe their opportunity. They've got two advantage at the moment. Make that, make that one. Oh, and they go down. They're losing their, they're, they're lo losing their teammates. But the jumps can come in. We see Mag. They do know that there's a jump to the side here. Can they punish it? Oh my gosh, Hammy goes down. Boy, it's a rough down for their side too. You see that the. To make penalty on most English side, but Chocolate Therapy able to potentially work their way out of their own. They're going to be able to get out to three down, wipe out once again as Chocolate Therapy in now a very powerful situation with 50 this seconds game. to go. This might be, yeah, this might just be game for them. Like, the Zuka, could, you've got you've got the game in your hand. You've got the series in your hand here. The Zuka, what do you got? Can you go for three? The Zuka will, can close it out. Oh, oh they go down! Oh, oh my lord, and I back when we thought it was all over for them they still have one more shot in life here with the gonna be able to work their way out of their penalty potentially here they have a zuka of their own now it's their time to see if their zuka is going to be able to get those massive picks firing it off not going to be able to fight any right now but they have their they're out of penalty at least here but now two down from their side here holding on with 10 seconds to go as long as the reflex stays alive the reflex has to stay alive that's oh, all they can do, because that thing can paint the map. It can paint the world. But as long if it's the only one alive, then it won't be able to. And that is going to be Chocolate Therapy taking this set five to three. Yeah, we came down of another back and forth game. And Chocolate Therapy, when they were able to just steal it out, just being able to cement that win for them that's just been a, some great stuff from their side. They've been playing well all sets, and it's been really good for them but that's just incredible win from the side chocolate therapy who's going to be improving their record on this season yes they are and honestly for them this is a must win because going down going down in the season um like being at a one a two one scoreline versus a one um a one two scoreline it's the difference is insane i i thought for sure that the zuka the zuka play before this like you if you got to use that zuka you know that if you get everyone's gonna be running into the choke points you have to be able to find those spots because you close it out you close with the map, you close with the series. Unfortunately, their teammates bailed them out later on, and they also bailed themselves out. But honestly, if you've been given the opportunity to have the Zuka in your hand and look for the shot to close out the game, you got to look for those picks, because that's what Zuka's given, given to you for. Definitely, yeah. And you saw that Chuck, they were able to just end up winning off of that without the Zuka pick there. And now, close inklings. Once again, like great performance from them, especially in those yes. well, that later half. Just being able to consistently almost bring it back or even bring it all the way down. They never seemed out of it. That really, and then they, that last game, it could have very well gone their way. I just thought a few more things gone differently. But spicy, we do have to remember that this is our first game of our. Uh, th this is the first True. game of the double header. So we gotta we gotta bounce off because we are two minutes behind schedule at the moment. Spicy, where can the lovely people find you? People can find me on Twitter at 2SpicyBM and also on Twitch at Spicy underscore BM. Genie, pleasure commentating with you. Where can the great, great people of the scene find you? Lovely people can find me on my socials at Genie7. That's G-E-E-N-I-E-7 -E -E underscore on Twitter X. No underscore on all other socials. Um, thank you to everyone at Splatoon Tourney for having us out here tonight. And do not go anywhere. 
the second set of the double header is coming right up after this break.
get ready for the next battle, ladies, gentlemen, they, them, and everyone else in between. My name is SPF Dark. I'm coming at you live here with Ludi tonight, bringing you our Division 8A Week 3 title match. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, there is a lovely person joining me here tonight. Dang, that is a fiery entrance. <laughs> it's like, so it's almost 4th of July. You can already hear the fireworks going off here. Hi there, I'm Fool PSD. This is SPF Dark. We're here to bring you Striving with Influence and Coughing Baby. <laughs> My, what a matchup tonight. I am very, I'm a very big fan of these names, you know. With, with this community, I can never get tired of the team names because there's, I, it's very hard. It, it's so funny because you have like such diverse and unique names like Driving with Influence or Coughing Baby. And then you have the just multiple just ways to in, in, introduce like splat into their, your team name which i find hilarious because you always like looking through like literally rosters just going out the names you can probably count like in the double digits <laughs> how, how many like splat not correlated names are there but i digress we are here for this matchup tonight i'm very excited to see what these teams are bring so i'm not too familiar with it but We'll see exactly how they're going to be faring as we're going to look here at what these map lips is going to be tonight. All right, so we see here, first off, we're going to be starting off with Scorch Gorge on Clam Blitz. A, a very highly contested um, feeling wise of what people think about this map. Uh, Fool, what, well, give us your insight on this. Ooh, I have a lot of bad history with this map, actually. <laughs> I've lost way too many sets and way too many tournaments, ending all hopes and dreams of getting anywhere far on this map, on this mode. Uh, Rainmaker <laughs> on this map, too, has been very, very difficult. And actually, that killed a set my team not too long ago. But well, since it's a game one, it's not a make or break yet. And we're already starting. <laughs> well, not quite yet. As we see there, we oh. we're missing one member from the opponent's team. So there's going to be a quick reset as we get to have ourselves just a little bit more time to talk about this beloved map uh, specifically. I, I, You mentioned that you have so many losses on this map. And I, I think like a good like 60-70% of the community will also agree that they have some very consistent just bad losses on this mm -hmm. map. I... In my brief run at competitive, back in I think season thirteen for Ludi, um, there was a there was a like two or three weeks back to back where Clambit Scorch Gorge was just on the map list. So we spent a lot of time on this map, and I gotta say, I, in my opinion of it only went down. That's awesome. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I cannot relate. I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of it for clams, it's just when we get to the basket, it's like such a struggle just getting there with mm -hmm. the ball. Whenever mm -hmm. someone gets the ball, they just rush to the basket and then they get shut down. We're uh, hopefully learning not to do that, but we'll see how these teams handle it too uh, with all the uh, fun uh, routes you can take to that basket. We'll see how uh, they blend, too. We saw the Range Blaster for, uh, I think it was Driving with Influence. Mm -hmm, probably. I think so. I My memory isn't that good to catch those brief uh, glimpses, but I will say, you mentioned the routes. There are, there's, it's funny you, say, you mentioned the routes, but there really are two choices here to get to that clan basket. You either go through the ramp, the ramp way to, right, that's right in front of the clan basket, mind you, but the issue with that ramp uh, just headways, the fact that it's a very tight choke point so if your team it doesn't matter if you the team has like very good offensive pressure if you're if the team you're going playing against has a very strong hold on that ramp you're just not gonna be able to get in it's such a tight space and that that might make you need to try and see if you can go through the second route through the grades which you know as the name implies going above the grades that's also very dangerous it's also once mm -hmm. again a very very hard to push through choke point yeah it is and yeah, again, there's a lot of experience trying just to break through that, but no, getting shut down actually by range blasters a lot. That's part of why I do like the pick uh, mm -hmm. for uh, first team with that range blaster. And then we also saw the heavy edit too, which is going to be interesting. Mm -hmm, definitely. The heavy edit has been seeing a bit more play recently from this new uh, season patch. Um, 
with a lot of the spells has been getting adjusted and i believe tactical are getting touched on a few weapons a few top tactical weapons got touched briefly my memory serves so um snipe rider which was the dominant hold of the of the of this game last season got toned down not it didn't necessarily get toned down a bit but seeing less play because some of the other tactical weapons got brought up which you know how you feel about tactical or is one way or another that doesn't really matter just the matter of the fact is that those other weapons got better in some way safe point so they are actually a bit more um just a bit more better to use more often than not than maybe a snipe rider those who those who don't actually like chargers that much right and now especially here you don't really have to run a cooler weapon like your team calm can still work with all the other dynamic specials and uh strong and powerful main weapons here so it'd be interesting to see what uh the other team has cooked up uh pardon me which one yeah. is it <laughs> i'm checking i don't remember which one's alpha which one's not uh well you know we'll see here shortly once these teams do ready up i do believe there are a bit of a, a bit a little bit of issues in the background on as to like player count who is actively ready or not so we're still sorting that out so hold on just for a little bit longer as this game's going on but I will say, seeing a range blaster on this map, um, you know, my feelings about this aside, a little bit of background on me as a player of this game, I am a blaster just fiend. I love, like, 70% of the blasters, the the 30% is a clash blaster, which I do not like, but I love all the other blasters, so seeing a range blaster, I'm always a, a just an advocate for it, especially now that blasters overall have been seeing just a bit more usage overall with each patch, each coming patch. Yeah, um, uh, I'm a, actually a custom blaster player myself. I did uh, enjoy playing vanilla blaster. It, it's a fun weapon. The area of effect just gives you what feels like so much control over your fights. And it's honestly very fun to just kind of be aggressive sometimes <laughs> with that weapon and get those directs, you know, those satisfying directs. <laughs> Yeah, the, those directs are definitely gonna, are definitely the just the pure dopamine hits of, of like why black why if you ask why blaster players play blasters, they're all gonna tell you the same thing is that when you hit that direct, there's like nothing mm -hmm. better in the entire world. And on the other side of that, playing against a blaster, I've been told so many people that they don't like playing against me because I hit those directs and they just instantly get <laughs> bam, they're done. They can't do anything about it because they, oh no, they didn't see me coming around the corner or oh no, they, they got a few shots on me, but I just hit that direct first, baby. What can you do about it? And the, the, another hard part too is that AOE. If you're trying to take cover, mm -hmm, hide mm -hmm. behind something, no, there's that AOE and it's coming down to uh, get you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, there's, there really is, it's, Blaster is such an interesting weapon for me because it is both a very hard to use a weapon, but once you actually it, think of it like a oh, what what's the not a what's that one um I'm I'm gonna annoy so many people in chat right now by saying this, but what's that um <laughs> algebra uh what's it called the, pra the parabola parabola right parabola. <laughs> yeah it's like an upside down parabola like in terms of like <laughs> uh, uh what's it called or not upside down the just like i don't know which way is upside down with parabolas i don't know math as you can clearly tell but it's like a parabola arc on like your ease of use with the weapon when you're starting to learn blaster it's a bit hard you know you're not gonna do much but once you start getting the hang of it you, that arc slowly gets up 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 right and you start climbing the ranks you know you start improving on the contrary, because you start improving, you start getting dealt people who know actually how to deal with blasters. So your ease, your right. effectiveness just goes down again. Because blasters, believe it or not, are kind of like very e easily just to play around if you know proper spacing. Right, and it's such a fun weapon, though. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, you can you you just know <laughs> if you're if you're gonna run blasters, you're just gonna have some good fun. Mm -hmm. And I, and I will say that we, we've we taken up a lot of this chat about <laughs> talking about Blaster, but maybe not enough about this map specifically. So real, to reel it back a bit, a bit in Scorch Gorge on Clam Blitz, I will say I, the, the, the Clam Blitz overall has always been a, a, just a central focus on just being a, able to actively coordinate with your team. You know, like ranking and like all the, the game modes together, 
for coordination. A lot of people will say that clan bases will probably be at the top, and that's because you gotta constantly think about your clan economy, constantly think about where your opponents are, how many clans they have, and just map presence, and just so many factors in order to actually try and push to get to the power clan basket. Right. Right. Man, it's... Man, as, as we said before, it's an intricate map. It's very, very not easy to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's this, <laughs> this Clampus on this map is it's, it's such a it's such a funny thing, man. Like with <laughs> a lot of the map design in this game, there it's so hard to, to figure out what most would consider a good map because a lot of the map design is relatively weak to off the gecko and there's some universal concepts right like a lot of people love mako zones or they love robo ramen but they not a lot of people like undertow nor do they like uh, this map but you know in order to not have a a tiny map pool which also is a a been a a topic of uh, contention um re uh, relatively recently anyways you know mm -hmm. you're gonna have these like a bit more just uncomfortable uh map modes you're gonna have to play and just deal with the cards you're dealt with you know but i think that's what makes this game interesting because you don't like this map mode you don't like um um scorch Gorge at all right but you have to play it. and i think it's it's exactly it, the 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 better players will be are looking at the map like i don't like this but i need to learn it because i might be played this and i'd rather not you know, lose a a three three game set match um on Scorch Gorge. You know, right, right. Now I do have to ask you a question. Uh, what is your favorite map mode, and then what is your least favorite map mode? Oh man, that is a loaded question because I don't think I even know the answer to that. To be completely honest. Um, well. I I always am a um Makomar is always a, a good one. I I I think I like I think you know what I'm gonna lock it in and say Mako Zones. I think Mako Zones is is at least it's top it's up there. It's top something, top five, top three. I don't know the specifics. I don't really pay much too much attention. I will say bottom uh bottom just worst map of the of this is probably this one like my least favorite map mode is this one but hey really? <laughs> yeah no i do not uh -oh. like this I, I, I played this one too much it is just burned to my memory but it seems that we are actually getting through something sorted there's some connection issues i'm not entirely sure as to what it was going on with the other team but it looks like we're going off for a 4v3 and i can only offer coffee baby my condolences for this uh, upcoming match yeah unfortunately though it's interesting that they're all three going duallys mm -hmm. Yeah, Why think, would that be? I think at this point, the cop and baby are, are realizing like we're not gonna get an actual proper like um uh, proper and like big quotation marks, mind you. We're not gonna get an, a proper match out of this, so why you might as well have fun and do something uh silly and you know going silly with the dowsers, the dapples, and the mm -hmm. I forget. Yeah, the the, it, the jet sculptures. Yeah, the jet, jet sculptures. I, yeah. My mind's a mess. Um, but yeah, you know, just we we ball. You know, as a lot of people say, we ball, and they're gonna ball, and they're actively doing a pretty decent job controlling this ramp. Yeah, they're holding them off pretty well. We can see the Dooley Squelcher getting two there, and uh, uh, driving with influence is gonna try and push back up, but they're holding their ground pretty well. That heavy edit's <laughs> getting behind, and there's the wipeout. Oh no. Mm -hmm. There's so only so much ground you can cover relatively quicking, quickly with uh, the duelies. Duelies not really known too well for their painting capability, so trying to repaint mid, retake mid, that takes a bit of time. And within that time, driving with influence are already back with three. I think those three power glams dunked in the basket yeah. already, 22 points down, and they're just keeping this pressure going on and on and on. Yeah, and it's still go. Oh man, and this is uh, close to knockout right here. They just need one more clam, and then that's it. And there's the cooler, so they can just come back instantly. Oh, mm. There's a jump. Mm -hmm. Can they mm -hmm. stop it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. <laughs> it. It's funny you mentioned the stopping the jump right there. That it 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 is possible. You can stop someone um, from jumping to under the bat clam basket. The window is really small. Like I think it's like. Somewhere between like five to ten frames small, or even less than that. Oh, but yes. if if you can get the right 
if you like throw a bomb right at the right moment, you can you can kill them before they can even have a chance to throw the um the any clams. But I can see here just the absolute massacre that the coughing baby unfortunately got uh dealt with against a team, you know, driving with influence, which take that as you will. Um, that's all I'm leaving that sentence with. <laughs> And you can see them, you know, this is uh, also what my team has problems with too. When we push up on that left side uh, next to the basket, it's really hard for us to make any progress because we get shut down by a bunch of crossfire and a ton of bombs. You saw that with the Dapple Duelies earlier, uh, right after the Driving with Influence through their uh, third ball in. You can't push that directly unless if you have influence underneath the basket. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there's only so much conjecture we can make right now with going a, a triple dueling comp against a, what I can only assume to be at least a semi-viable uh, weapon composition from Driving with Influence. There's only so much you can act, realistically do. And as we see, we're, I'm pretty sure, I think we're just going to speed on the rest of these games right now as we're heading over to Stur Tower Control on Sturgeon's Shipyard. What are your thoughts on this map mode? It's, an, it's a map mode. <laughs> it's a map mode for sure. Um, interesting that we see the uh, uh, Splashdown Nautilus coming out. I think that might uh, give them uh, of a boost for uh, going on a 3v4 mm -hmm. on this map, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any edge you might can get, you will probably should take at this point. Um, it is unfortunate, though, that <laughs> Driving with Influence are just able to just walk forward and not be too fearful of much because. With only three players on team, that that one, if you'd be surprised at how much of a difference just not be, needing to be focused on one uh, one player, how much of a difference that makes, and already just seeing it already right here with Dragon Quest to just keep this pressure going and going and going. And I can only assume Coughing Baby right now are just playing their mains at this point. Yeah, they're trying their best to just hold the line, but there's somebody on tower, and that tower is getting pushed to the second and last checkpoint. And there's the crack and kill, and then the uh, heavy edit splatling doing their best to just hold the line from the top. Mm -hmm. And just and we're like not gonna that, we're, just like that. Another yeah, one. We're, is another we're not game. gonna see the push that they're looking for too, unfortunately. Or sorry, not the push, the stop that they're looking for. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take it on here. I'm gonna go on the record and say that I hope I hope Coffin Baby takes one game off of tri driving with influence, just for the pure entertainment value. And and I don't I don't mean in the sense of like oh driving with influence weren't um at their full power or at their proper composition. You know if we're doing playing regularly. No, I want Coffin Baby to take driving with influence even with their one player down to try and take one game. That's their challenge right there. If they manage to do that, um. I don't have a cash out reward for that. <laughs> it would be interesting to see uh, driving with influence for the game five to kind of make it even, play a meme comp or something, give conf coughing baby uh, a chance to just really shine on stream too. But we'll see. We'll see what happens later down the line. And we got Undertow Spillway Rainmaker next. Now, what are your thoughts on this one? I know a lot of people do not like Undertow Spillway. And even with a re recent rework on the map itself, you know, adding a small little like a uh, route underneath the ramps on both sides, it's 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 Undertow, man. It's a very narrow choke point right there in mid. And it's just all, it comes down to how well can you keep that mid control. Because once, especially on Rainmaker, once you get that first checkpoint down, in a, in a normal game setting anyways, the key goal, the key thing to keep in mind with this map mode is that first checkpoint. Whoever gets that first checkpoint down typically has, are going to be the ones who are going to have major temp tempo control throughout the remainder of the game. And once you get the Rainmaker past that first checkpoint, well, that's the danger territory where you don't want to be on the receiving end of it. Right. I'd actually be uh, not too surprised if we saw uh, beacon weapons from uh, Coughing Baby, which none of their players' mains have beacons. So we'll see. Trying to keep or maintain uh, as much presence on the map as they can against uh, four players when they're uh, down one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, which we don't see that. Uh... 
But the flames uh with the missiles. <laughs> the very beloved missiles. Uh, I will I genuinely don't know what the, that weapon's missile output is now these days. I just hardly ever get to see, get it see it get played. But right already driving with influence, just <laughs> encroaching and collapsing on the members of coughing with baby. Make sure to get a wipe out before they even even think about the Rainmaker and with the hammer going in already on that rep and pushing into their side of the spawn, they're just trying to, I think they're just trying to get through this as fast as they can. It is unfortunate that they're going up against a, a, a player down, but playing this out, I, I'm pretty sure they just want to wrap this up as fast as they can for their own timely sake as well as probably just to to save Coughing Baby from any sort of embarrassment from prolonging this any longer than they, than they have to. Even though Coughing Baby are giving it their all, they're trying mm -hmm. so hard just to just find a way to bridge the gap, but another wipeout just seals the game for driving with influence. Mm -hmm. And honestly, right now, these in-betweens of the games where I'd be trying to talk a little bit like what these trip players might be doing, could be doing differently, trying to talk just a little bit of strategy and trying to get into the head of these players and see what might be going on, but three players down, driving with the influence, they're just trying to get, and just make this a, a fast and easy uh, cash out for them, just putting their scoring at a 2 1 while unfortunately giving Coffee Baby a 1 2 scoring as they head to the week four. But from that match mode going on, we'll be heading on to Umami Splat Zone. What can you tell us about this map, Boo? <laughs> it's again, this one's a map. I do <laughs> very much like the zone on this map. I feel like that it gives the map mode much more dynamic mm -hmm. than it does on the other three or mm -hmm. four if you count turf war for whatever reason <laughs> um but this is a map that i think would probably feel good with coughing uh coughing baby if they had their full worth mm -hmm. uh looking at their weapon pool and uh on sendu too yeah they I... go on oh sorry no, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, I will say that I, I completely agree with you on this. On that, uh, the the two as uh, zone on this map, I think I think is actually the saving grace on for this um map specifically zones on Umami. I don't think it's. I, I know people are, are very lukewarm with this with with, with this map in particular. I kind of like zones Umami because, like you mentioned, there's the, the split zones where you can actively play against each other, trying to see who can outplay on each side of the zone. So that mid control, especially on the mid platform is very very important here i would actually very much like to see uh weapons with more spammable specials for coughing baby to uh just try and maintain as much presence as they can on this map um their heavy edit backline i think would uh work very well if they played the uh crab variation too but we'll see if they come out for this fourth match mm -hmm. We'll see exactly what these players are going to plan on trying to switch to even to maybe just entertain the folks. You know, you know what I want to see on the side of coughing, baby. I want to bring out that charger. That, I've been seeing a lot of people like in, in relatively recent times anyways, pulling out the 360 clips. And I want to see that if you're not going to be going down and, and, and trying to take this game um, from one way to another, I want to see the style. Bring me the, the freshness. Bring that that sauce give me all you have right now and as right now they're actually fighting back against driving with influence but unfortunately just getting shut down almost instantly Un yeah unfortunately they can't ha stop those flanks from uh, the other players from driving with influence like you, you saw there with the heavy head he came out of nowhere on the uh left side and just shut them down though they do have control of the zone now see how uh, they can hold it for a little bit mm -hmm. It, it is it, it is a very much like a bit of a rougher uh, game for driving with influence and it, it's hard to tell one way or another if it's because they're not actively playing um weapons that they're entirely comfortable comfortable with or if they're just not really like in the mindset now and they're just kind of like lean back and just going through the motions at this point um it's hard to tell we don't know the inside information but Coffee with Baby are putting up Blaster Gaming, getting two down already, and they're pushing up, trying to see if they can potentially get a third or fourth pick up here. But no, the the Rap Blaster on the other side just zones them out. But the heavy edits up top and uh, getting paint down on the field, getting ready for another cooler, trying to keep them in the game too. Is the Flingsa goes super aggressive and takes the zap. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I will say this is. I think this is Coffee Baby's uh, longest game so far in this uh, set, which is an unfortunate thing to say, uh, considering the circumstance. But you know, take all the wins you can at this point, as they're actively scrimmaging, fighting, it's driving with influence, by fighting back, biting back, but they're just getting flushed out bit by bit. One goes down, another goes down. Not with the trade, but trade for Coffee Babies is just never going to be in their favor at this point. No, it's not, because it's, it's unfortunate when you're down one player, you're down one player, and it's, it's, you feel it. And here comes the crab from driving with influence, getting, uh, just getting that set up, just getting that lockout, and they're already, uh, coughing babies pushed back into their spawn, but they're, here they come back. Now, I'll say one thing that Driving with Influence just forgot and the teensy bit about is actually paying the, the last part of the zone on one side. They were giving it just a little bit of extra time for Common Babies to, to re-engage re, re and try and do pull out something, anything. But it looks like that may and may not matter in the end of things as missiles go out, scattering the rest of Driving with Influence. Coughing Baby has one last chance here to try and make magic work, but no, it's just not enough as one player and a wipeout. Oh, no. And that will be the game for uh, Driving with Influence. They take uh, their fourth one. Mm -hmm. It'd be... Yeah. Sorry. It... I really want to see Coughing Baby, just those three players, uh, take this as much of a learning opportunity as they can. Because there were moments when they could have, yes, if they had the fourth player, uh, yes, if they had that extra support, uh, things would have gone differently. But uh, specific flanks that uh, are blind to them until suddenly they pop like a water balloon. And just some other things that they can tweak and uh, improve their game overall. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's hard to say entirely too as well if they're actually trying to give their all right now. If they're just as well just lean back, going through the motions, just trying to get through these games and just not really think too much about it. Um, we don't know one way or another. It's up in the air right now. We're just here to entertain the folks and just have fun with it as we head on to Museum Dolphin Cena with Clam Blitz. Now, this is a map mode. I'm pretty, I, I'm pretty sure. I think anyway that it's popular with everyone. It has a, it has a nice like open mid. There's like a lot of like ledges to play around with. It's just uh, there's a good control point as well. That's not like an, entirely just choking out like tr any pushes. It, I, I think this is a good map mode. I'm gonna be completely honest. Yeah, I like it too. It's it's general generally fun to play on uh, an open with your team and uh, Senduku or an open uh, not open sorry in tournaments if it comes up. Uh, it's a it's a good map. It's very well designed. The um, clam blitz mode I think works quite well with all the spinners and moving objects, uh, much more so than many of the other maps with those kinds of elements. Mm -hmm. It's, I think some of the praise to this map specifically just comes from the simply the fact, simply from the fact that it's a Splatoon 1 era map. And a lot of people notice that old, the older maps definitely have that that spark that some of the newer ones don't. Even though some of the, a few of the newer ones still, at, not still, do actually have that spark still. Um, like Robo Ramen, I know that one's very popular. Mm -hmm. I, I personally love it. And I think on it, I don't really ever have a bad time with it. But Museum of you know, being a Splatoon 1 era map, I think that sort of like gives a bit of a merit to its success. And it just feels so refined. Like it's been over, uh, it's been around for three games now, and the port it it just feels nice. It feels uh, unlike most of the other maps. It feels uh, fun and good, and solid. <laughs> yeah, those are very very things. adjectives. Just... <laughs> Just bear with me here for a moment. Yeah, yeah, I get you. No, I completely agree with you. No, very important things to have, have make a a very fun <laughs> map. Um, but it's it, with that being said as well, like there is some like um, counter argument to that since this map actually isn't like its peak glory back in its heyday. There are a few no, it isn't. features um, that aren't present in this game specifically, which a lot of people are like. I'm, I won't get to the beats of it. That's a whole can of words I'm not, not trying to open up tonight. But I already, driving with influencers, just once again, using their extra manpower, using whatever advantage they can, to, that they can have, to just force their ways to a, a 
fast vic as much of a quick victory as they can. I think the weirdest part about this push so far is just mistaking your ultra stamp as a clam and just eating it into the basket. What are you? What? <laughs> I mean, but here they come with another ball and just trying to get it in. And oh, they missed oh, one. That is. Oh no. That is an unfortunate miss to try and get this calls out here as Driving With Influence are three down. Looking to try and reset things as Coughing Baby are just already pushing, slowly pushing up mid, getting a trade, but a trade's not what you want on the Coughing Baby side as they're now two against three. These numbers aren't even, you can't take those trades. No, you can't. And this Stamper has to be super careful what fights they take because if they die, they're the front, uh, they're, sorry, the uh, Flingza has also proven to be super aggressive, but the uh, Stamper has more of the momentum that the team needs to stay in the game and stay uh, keep up with the push. And that momentum is very good to have and very good to try and abuse, but there is one important factor that might change a few outcomes, and that's just bodies. If you just don't have enough body presence on the map, you just can't work with it because you're at it. You're playing at a constant disadvantage. It's only until you win two fights when you're finally at like the advantage. And winning two fights, individual fights, might I say, um, that's such a hard thing to do, especially since you're playing at a constant disadvantage. Right, and it's such it's so hard in a team game. Like the game is supposed to uh, force you to cooperate with your teammates, and if you're down one. As you said, it's just so much harder. It's this nasty handicap that you have to work with. But I gotta give credit where credit is due. Coughing Baby just sticking it out with the three before the entire run of this set. You know, the, a lot of people would have just taken the forfeit and just gone on with the night and just probably just blocked up, went to bed early and just tried to try and get a better day tomorrow and see what what's next for their week four but the fact that they're playing out playing this out and actively like just having fun with it i will i can only assume at this point since they're sticking it out this long i gotta give them credit they're they're, they're the real heroes for night oh, not only playing no. it out <laughs> an unfortunate misfailed push by them just <laughs> second shutdown from a backline push very unfortunate but once again that body is very important I would have let them have it if I was that player. <laughs> now, they worked so hard for that push, and you just watched them barrel through the rest of uh, driving with influence. And there's those moments are very common, but when you uh, do that with one man down the time, like that's a that is a very hard loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very hard and very mostly mm, a. A somewhat bitter loss as well, because I, I know that, that there might be some just sort of like uh, sour feelings about how this set could have gone. Because it's it's hard to say how this set could have gone. Who knows? Maybe Coffin maybe were the ones with an advantage here, and they could have taken away a victory off of driving driving with influence. But we we won't know that how that story will, will go tonight. And you know, due to unforeseen reasons, reasons we can't specifically know for certain. You know, we just don't have the full story and. The story we have right now tonight is driving his influence getting a 5-0 victory against Coffin Baby. Though Coffin Baby, a valiant effort for just playing this set out at all. Yeah. It they did they did their best and we did see them shine a bit too. They mm. had their good moments and they had their downs, but it was all overshadowed by a minus one. Mm -hmm. It's an unfortunate thing to see go on, but with that being said and done, that's going to be our last set here tonight with us, Ludi, tonight. So, as we begin to wrap things up, Fool, where can they find you on any socials? So, uh, my main is, uh, this, uh, not Discord, uh, YouTube. I make music. Uh, I only have three releases right now. Uh, I'm working on that. Um, if you want to, uh, I have a Twitter. I don't ever use it. <laughs> um, but where can we find you? Well, you can find me both at Twitter and Twitch at SPF underscore dark, where I repost a bunch of random nonsense. I tweet from time to time. I stream on the rare occasion. Schedule has been hectic lately as I'm about to, and I'm in the middle of a move, but you know, I take, I take the time whenever I can to try and entertain because I am an entertainer at the, at, at the heart and soul of it. But 
With that being said, it's been a pleasure being here with you, Fool. And just before we sign things off for tonight, there will be more games well. tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. But that's going to be it for us tonight. So we'll see you guys later.